<sighs> Hello, ladies and gentlemen. This is Fox Sicker. We love a buddy. It's been a while before we did raid. Well, kind of because um, I've been playing games lately. Ha ha! But it's good to sit down. Have a good read. Enjoy the horror that has been bestowed upon you. From your personal horror tiller. Let's put our lovely buddy here. It was a nice summer day. My five year old son James is playing outside in the backyard of a suburban home. James has always been a quiet boy. He played by himself mostly. He never had many friends. But he always had a wild imagination. I was in the kitchen feeding our dog, Fido, and I heard the sound like James was talking to somebody in the backyard. I'm not sure who it could be he was talking to. Could he finally made a friend? Being a single mom is hard for me to always keep an eye on my son. So I decided to go outside and check on him. When I went to the backyard, I was a bit confused because James was the only person back there. Was he talking to himself? I could have sworn I heard another voice. James! It's time to come inside! I called out to him. He came inside and sat at the kitchen table. It was about lunchtime, so I decided to make him a turkey sandwich. James, who are you talking to out there? I asked. James looked up for a moment. I was playing with my new friend, he was. He said, smiling. I poured him some milk and continued to pry, as any good mother would. Does your friend have a name? Why didn't you ask him to have lunch with us? I asked. James stared at me for a moment before replying. His name is Laughing Jack. I was a bit taken back what he had said. Oh? That's a strange name. What does your friend look like? He asked, a bit confused. Oh, he's a clown. He has long hair and a big surly cone nose. He got long arms and shaggy pants. He's strippy socks. And he always smiles. I realized my son was talking about an imaginary friend. I suppose it's normal for a kid his age to have imaginary friends. Especially when he has no real kid friends to play with. It's probably just a phase. The rest of the day went as per usual. And it was starting to get late as I put James to bed. I talked to him. Give him a good night kiss and made sure to turn his nightlight on before I closed the door. I was pretty tired myself so I decided to go to bed not that long after. I had an awful nightmare. It was dark. I was in some kind of rundown amusement park. I was scared running through an endless field of empty tents broken down rides and abandoned game huts. The whole place had a horrible look to it. Everything was black and white. The price of stuffed animals hung from the nooses in the game huts. All with sick grins stitched onto their faces. It felt like the whole park was looking at me. Even though there was another, not another living thing in sight. Then suddenly, I began to hear music playing. The sounds of Pop Goes the Weasel began playing on a squeeze box and go to the park. It was hypnotizing. I followed its tune to the circus tent almost in a trance, unable to stop my legs from moving forward. It was pitch black. The only light that came from a single spotlight shining on the center of the big top. As I walked towards the light, the music slowed down, and I found myself singing along, unable to stop. All around the mulberry bush, the monkey chased the weasel. The monkey thought this was all fun. 
The music stopped right before it climbs up, and suddenly the lights shut on. The intensity of the lights was practically blinding. All I could see was a small dark silhouette shoveled towards me. Then another one appeared. Another. And another. There was dozens of them, all coming towards me. I could not move. My legs were frozen. And I could do was watch as the hunter figures drew near. As they got closer, I could see. They were children! As I looked, I noticed one of them, they were horribly disfigured and mutilated. Some had cats all over their bodies. Others had severe burns, and others just missing limbs, even eyes. The children enveloped me, clawing at my flesh, dragging me to the ground, tearing inside, tearing inside me. As the children tore me apart, I faded away. I could hear his laughter. Horrible, awful, evil laughter. I woke up in the mo in. I woke up in the next morning in a cold sweat. After taking a few breaths, I looked over and saw that a few of James' action figures were posing facing me on top of my nightstand. I sighed. James had probably woken up early and put these here. I gathered up the toys and made my way to James' room. However, when I opened the door, James was sound asleep. I just shrugged and placed the toys back into his box and headed out to the living room. A little later, James woke up and I made him breakfast. He was quiet and seemed a bit groggy. Perhaps he didn't sleep well either? I decided to ask him about the toys. James, honey, did you put the toys in Mom's room this morning? His eyes shot up and for a moment quickly glanced back down at his cereal. Laughing Jack did it. I rolled my eyes in response. Well, you tell Laughing Jack to keep his toys in your room. James nodded and finished his breakfast, then decided to go play outside in the backyard. I went to relax in the living room and must have dozed off because I woke up a couple hours later. <laughs> I need to check on James. I was a little bit worried. It's been over two hours and I haven't checked on him. I went and stepped out in the backyard, but James wasn't there anymore. I was getting nervous, so I called out to him. James! James! Where are you? And I heard a giggle coming from the front yard. I rushed through the gates and found for, uh, through the gates around the front of the house. James was sitting on the sidewalks. I breathed a sigh of relief and walked over to him. James, how many times I have told you to stay in the back of James? What are you eating? James looked up and uh James looked at me and then reached into his pocket and pulled out a handful of hard candy of all colors. This made me very nervous. James Who gave you that candy? James just stared at me not speaking. James Please tell mommy where you got that candy. James hung his head down and said, Lavin Jack gave it to me. My heart sunk. I kneeled down and looked at him in the eyes. James, I had had enough of this damn Lavin Jack thing. He is not real. Now, this is a very serious situation. I need to know who gave you that candy. I could see my son's eyes tear up, but Mama, Lavin Jack did give me the candy. I closed my eyes and took a deep breath. James has never lied to me, but he's telling me it's impossible. I made him spit out the candy and I threw the rest away. James appeared to be fine. Maybe I'm overreacting? All he could have gotten is from Tom and Linda from next door, or Mr. Rocker from down the street. Either way, I'm gonna have to keep a closer eye on James. That night, I put James to bed as usual and decided to go to the bed early myself. Suddenly, I woke up by a loud bang coming from the kitchen. I sprung out of bed and hurried downstairs. When I got to the kitchen, I was horrified. Everything on the counter has been thrown on the floor. Our dog Fido is hung dead from the light fixture. His stomach was cut open and stuffed with candy. The same type that Jane was eating earlier that day. My shock was quickly broken by the sharp screams from James' room, followed by loud crashes. I quickly grabbed a knife 
from the drawer and moved up the stairs with the speed that only a mother whose child is in danger could have. I burst through the door and flicked on the lights. Everything in the room was knocked over and tossed on the floor. My poor son was on his bed crying and shaking with fear. A pool of urine stained the sheets. I scooped up my child and ran outside the house. I went next door to Tom's and Linda's house. Luckily, they were still awake. They let me use their phone and I called the police. It didn't take them long to arrive. I explained what happened, and they looked at me it was all like crazy. They searched the house. All they could find was a dead dog and two trash rooms. The officer told me that someone had probably gotten into the house and done this right before making a quick escape. When they heard me come from the stairs, I knew it wasn't true. All the doors were locked and none of the windows were open. Whatever was in my house didn't come from outside. The next day James stayed inside. I didn't want him to leave my sight. I went to uh, I went into the garage and found his old baby monitor and set up in his room. If anything comes into that tonight, I was gonna be able to hear it. I went to the kitchen and grabbed the largest knife I could get from the drawers and put it on my nightstand. Imaginary friend or not, I'm not letting anything hurt my little boy. Soon enough, the night came. I put James to bed. He was afraid, but I promised him that I was going to let anything happen to him. I tucked him in, gave him a good night kiss, turned him on, and turned on the night light. Before I closed the door, I whispered to him, Good night, James. I love you. I tried to stay up as long as I could, but after a few hours, I felt myself drifting off. My baby would be safe tonight and I need sleep. I just lay there with my head on the pillow and I heard a soft noise coming from the baby monitor as I put on my nightstand. First it sounded like interference that like the radio would make. Then I returned to a soft moan. Was James asleep? Then I heard it laugh from my nightmare. That horrible laugh. I sprung up from the bed and grabbed the knife under my pillow. I rushed over to James' room and creaked open the door. I tried the light switch, but it would not come on. I took a step and I could feel warmth thick liquid on my feet. Suddenly, James finally came on and I could see the horror laid on for me. Sitting through his hands and feet, his chest was cut wide open and his organs hung low to the floor. His eyes and tongue were being removed, along with most of his teeth. I was disgusted. I could hardly believe this was my baby boy. And I heard it again, a soft, desperate moan. James was still alive. A baby. My poor baby. He's in so much pain he could barely cling to life. I ran across the room and vomited on the floor, but the sickness was interrupted by a horrible crackle coming from behind me. I spun around while still wiping bile from my mouth. Some guy out of shadows emerged from the fiend, the response to all this horror. Laughing Jack. His ghost white skin matted a black hair along and down his shoulders. He had piercing white eyes surrounding him by a dark black rings. His twisted smile revealed a row of sharp, jagged teeth, and his skin does not look like skin at all. It almost looked like rubber or plastic. He wore a patchy black and white clown outfit with strip sleeves and socks. His body itself was gross good. His long arms hang down past his waist. The way he posed made him look like boneless, like a rag doll. He let out a sickening laugh as to let me know he was pleased by my reaction to his work. Then he turned around slowly in front of James and began to laugh even more at the horrific sight as he laid out. That was enough to shake me from my terror. I snapped. Get away from him, you bastard! I rushed at the monster, raised the knife above my head, and stabbed down at him. But as soon as the knife touches him, he disappeared in a cloud of black smoke. The knife passed right through the pierce, James still being hurt, splashing the warm blood on my face. No. What have I done? My baby. I killed my baby. I merely fell to my knees. I could hear sirens in the distance growling louder. My boy. 
My sweet baby boy, I promised mommy would protect you, but I failed. I'm sorry, James. I'm so sorry. The police arrived to find me in front of my son, still within the knife covering my baby's blood. The trial was short. Insanity. I was placed in the house for the criminal insane, where I've been for the past two months. It's not so bad here. The only reason I'm right now is because someone is playing pop muscle easel outside my window. I will talk to the orderlies about it in the morning. Holy crap! I... Being a father to a child that's about to turn two, I felt that. I mean, I probably would find a way to get Jack. Like, I would made my daughter leave the place, the premises with her mommy. I... No. <laughs> Ugh. That actually turned my insides. Always remember, don't trust a stranger. Don't take candy from people. And beware of mystical and magical beings that turn your children inside out. Oh god, I would have been a major stress and I wanted to kill him. I wanted to die if anything happened to my daughter. No. This has been Fox Sucker. We had a good read? I hope you enjoyed it. Honestly, I did. Anyway. Fox Licker and Love a Guy. We are out of here. Take care.